Welcome to 12 in the Morning Rants. I am JV. I hope you guys are up and at it. Having a good one. Whether you're joining in the morning, day or night, though. Well, you're here now, so let's do this right, son. And we're going to talk about something that um, I haven't really talked about on here before. At least not that I can remember. And if I have, it was very brief. But let's talk about... Let's talk about some sports. More specifically, let's talk about some... Oh, dear God. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> that was not supposed to happen right there. That almost was um embarrassing. But, yeah, let's talk about some football today. Because, um... We just hit playoff season. And... Long and behold, to the surprise of many, even most Seahawks fans, I would say, especially what Seahawks fans were thinking at the beginning of this season, the Seahawks, by the skin of their teeth, made it to the playoffs. And even though, yes, we needed to win the last game of our regular season in order to possibly make it, Our fate was in the hands of the Lions in their game against the Packers. Which, you know, if we didn't win our game, then, you know, it would have been the Lions versus the Packers. And the winner would have, you know, went to the playoffs. But since we won, um, the Lions were eliminated. And although I was... Probably like most people, a little scared where it's like the Lions are going to be like, well, shit, we can't go to this, we can't, we can't make it to the playoffs. We're already out. So what's the point? Luckily, the Lions had two reasons to want to win the game. The numero uno, um, they were eight and eight. So with a win... They would end the season off on a winning score, which is like, it's a big deal for the Lions. It is a big deal. And I got to say, if the Lions keep on going the way they are going, they already kind of are, but these guys are going to be dangerous. These guys are going to be dangerous next year. If they keep going the way they are going, I don't know. There is a very big possibility they could be making the playoffs next year. I hope so. Because I know Detroit has been... um, They haven't been doing much as of late. But, you know, I'm always going for, you know, the teams that are the underdogs. So, it would be nice to see them, you know, make it next year. Not this year, unfortunately. But, they did help us. Not just because they wanted a winning um, score to end off the se- uh, the season. But usually, if a team is like, we're not going to the playoffs. So, that team can go to the playoffs unless we beat them. Fuck it, we're going to fucking beat their asses then. And that's exactly what they did. That's what they did. Every Seahawk fan became a dedicated Lions fan for a game. Which, like I was just saying, I I was rooting for the Lions low-key unless we played them. And then I was just like... Okay, we better not lose to the Lions. Just speaking of our game with the Lions, we had like one of the highest scoring games of... The season, I believe. I don't think it was the highest scoring. It it was pretty high. 
we had 48 points, I rem- if I remember right, and they had 45. Was not a defensive game by any stretch of the imagination, but it was very entertaining to watch. Very entertaining. But whatever the case, the Seahawks, despite what everybody said, everybody, even some Seahawks fans, I'll even put myself on that list as well. Not to say I thought they were going to suck, but I didn't see them making the playoffs this season because there are a lot of changes going on. And, of course, one of the biggest changes we had to go through was the changing of the guard. And I don't mean head coach. No, we still got Pete Carroll. Thank God. And that dude still looks spry. Like, I I don't know when he plans on retiring or if he plans on retiring anytime soon. But (sighs) still, still going. He's still out there. Going crazy, like, you know, he's like jumping up and down with the boys whenever we make a big play, so that's awesome. Keep Pete around. But what I mean by the changing of the guard is that we lost our long, I almost said long awaited, our long time um, QB, um, Russell Wilson. Which, even when we got Russell Wilson back in the day, um, people were still questioning like the decision to pick up Russell in the first place. It's not that he didn't have a good throwing arm. It's not that he didn't have the speed. la da 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 You know, because he obviously had all those really... You know, he had all the good stuff. He could move in the pocket and all that. But a lot of people around that time were like, I don't know what the Seattle was thinking. He's short. That was really it. That was the only reason that they they found a way to, you know, go at Seattle. It's like, oh, they picked this this little guy. Hey, little guy. So they immediately were just like, oh, you know, I don't know what Seattle was thinking. Uh, they're going to suck this year. Oh, I don't know. What the hell? Russell would proceed to make it to the playoffs in his first season. Now, granted, he wasn't the sole reason why we made it. The Legion of Boom was already like already in development and it was like really starting to like settle in like oh that defense was getting real good and then we had like Marshawn Lynch on there and you know he was just he was almost in like peak beast mode you know or it kind of was like peak beast mode era And then there's just a whole lot of great going for us. But we needed that great quarterback, you know, to really put the cherry on top. Boink! Because, you know, we can have a great defense. But unless we have an offense to make some points here and there, you know, it's kind of of useless to have a great defense if your offense sucks ass. (laughs) Am I right, Denver? (laughs) All jokes aside, it's kind of funny that whole mixture of things like oh my god my emotions all over what i'm what i'm trying to say is that they dismissed us all the way back then when russell first came on shut everybody up yeah we made it to the playoffs but we i think we lost i don't remember who we faced off with i just we didn't make it to Obviously, we're going to make no Super Bowl. We didn't make it to NFC Championship. I don't know. Did we make it to Divisional? Or did we lose a wild card? Whatever the case. We made it there. We got out. But all of a sudden, there were whispers that we could have something here. And then, of course, the next year, we would go and win it all against Broncos. Again, mixed emotions how that all ties in, it tears my insides apart. We go and face the Broncos and absolutely spank them on field. Absolutely spank them. 
considering I uh, look, I've heard it was like probably one of the most um boring Super Bowls to watch because it was so dominant on one side that it's just like, okay, Seattle's gonna win. Woohoo, can we just end this already? Could there be a I know it's a Super Bowl, but can we have like a mercy rule or something? But no, there was not. But I gotta say, as a Seahawks fan, that was very um cathartic. Considering we were potentially screwed out of a Super Bowl in 05, I believe it was, against the Steelers due to some very bad refing. Nice to see that the bad refing has, you know, sustained life, you know, all these years later. I mean, sometimes it works in your favor, sometimes it really kicks you in the ass and, you know, depending on where it falls, you either love it or you really hate it. Well, speaking of which, I'll have to talk about one of the bad calls in our game against the Rams. Where it actually fell in, into our favor. Literally fell into our favor. Where, you know, we were kicking off the ball, you know, in the fourth quarter. And they got a roughing the passer, or a roughing the kicker penalty. The Rams did, because one of their guys fell into our kicker. Which is like, I get it. I get what the whole roughing the passer, kicker penalties are. No, no, they're, 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 they're supposed to be there to protect, you know, the kicker and the, you know, quarterback. Sure. But sometimes, especially with that penalty, it's like, what can you do? Like, the dude was literally in a pile of other dudes that were all falling over. Momentum was already going. No one can stop. And the dude just kind of like flopped over and knocked into our kicker. And then it was like rough in the kicker. And then that gave us a fresh set of downs. And, you know, we ultimately used that to not only really chip down the clock, but um, I believe we tied up the game after that. So um, I didn't mind that, but I know a lot of people were pretty pissed about it. But yeah, going back to the bad officiating, um, who knows if we actually would have won that game against Pittsburgh if that call wasn't done. But it's like whatever momentum we could have had and should have had, it's like it completely took the wind under our sails from under us and even a lot of people that weren't like Seattle fans were like, yeah, that was kind of... That was bad. That was really, really, really bad, actually. So to see us to go, see us go to the Super Bowl again, just to absolutely cream the team, especially a very big team like Denver, when they actually had a good quarterback in um, Peyton Manning. Yeah, just to see them get their asses kicked was just mwah, chef's kiss. I actually do like Peyton Manning too, so that's no there's no harshness towards him. I'm just saying, you know, catharsis. It felt good. I liked it. It's nice to have a nice convincing one. Probably one of the most dominant wins ever. But then we would go back to back Super Bowls. We go from one big franchise juggernaut to probably the biggest franchise juggernaut. Probably of all time. <clears throat> Definitely in our time. Um, going against the Patriots. And we should have won. We should have won. But in a call heard around the world that shocked many of football fans... Look, if you know football, you already know the fucking call that I'm talking about. And everyone already knows what you're going to say. You should have just ran the fucking ball. You have one of the greatest running backs of all time on your freaking side. It's not even third or fourth down or whatever. It's like second down. It was only a few yards. 
how many times has Marshawn Lynch is like everyone knows he's gonna get the ball and they all try to go after him, but the dude's just a brick shit house. He's just got tree trunks for legs, so he just brutes his feet into the ground and just pushes people through. And then even if he didn't get it on that next or that play, he would probably get it on the next or the second to last or whatever. So after that loss, um, there was almost kind of a change in the, um, at least as far as the game, how the Seahawks felt, there was almost a different feeling to them. And I think Marshawn, <clears throat> Marshawn Lynch kind of referred to it, Richard Sherman kind of talked about it himself, where it's just like, after that, it you know, everyone kind of got a good look at each other, and and Richard Sherman's words, he was just like, well, you finally got to see, like, who in their eyes they were, like, catering to, and then that made, you know, that did kind of separate some of the boys, so to say, I don't know, it's, not that I, not that I don't believe Richard or, like, Marshawn, Especially when Marshawn says things like you couldn't come in contact with Russell. You had to call him like through a manager or an agent or some shit in order to talk to him. It's like, I don't know how you build a relationship with your team if you have an agent. It's like, I don't even know if like, did Peyton or Tom or Aaron Rodgers, I think he might have. But it's like, did all these, like, top-tier quarterbacks... Does Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, have a fucking... Um, Josh Burrow, do these guys have agents? To where it's like, if our, if any of our team wants to talk to us about the game or what's our plan, blah, 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 they have to talk to my agent. I just, that's so weird. That is so weird. I mean, I don't know if he had an agent around that time. That would happen through time. But anyways, you can almost feel it where there was almost like a change in mood on how the Seahawks were. It almost felt like after that Super Bowl, the Legion of Boom was just kind of... They weren't done, done, but you you know, slowly but surely you saw, you know, like Sherman would leave, Thomas would leave, um, Chancellor would retire... Which made me sad. My boy, bam, bam. I can't believe he's not retired. <sighs> At least he got to retire as a hawk. That's my boy. That's my fucking dude. He doesn't even know who I am. So, whatever. I still wear that jersey proud, though. It makes me so happy. All that bragging aside. <laughs> not that I'm bragging. <laughs> but I am. But I'm not. But I am. But yeah, there was almost like a different kind of mood. It was It's kind of hard to tell. But it's like something about the Seahawks felt different after that Super Bowl win. I mean, we kept making it to playoffs. So, it's not like we got terrible. We were quite good, actually. Quite impressively good. Like I said, we were consistently... In the playoffs, not in the Super Bowl. No, we still only had those two Super Bowls under our under our fingertips. But still, we were like in the playoffs regularly. But there was just that spark, that um, that tan- that tangible like it factor. Like there was just a there was such a um, it had that if factor. It's one of those things that you can't describe it, but when you know that they have it, you just feel it. And you didn't quite think they had it anymore. Like I said, they were still making it into the playoffs, and they were still doing impressive games, and they were still fun to watch, but it's like that it factor just wasn't there anymore, and we couldn't quite... We just couldn't quite make it all the way. We can get close, but we couldn't quite make it. So, going into... 
what was the season? 2020? No. 2021? Yeah, it was 2021. That was... Even, but even like 2020, it's like, you almost, most Seahawks fans, you know, you can kind of start telling that Russell wasn't really feeling it no more. You know, he didn't want to. I think he still admired the fans, but, you know, as far as, like, you know, how things were being done in the background and everything with um the way Pete Carroll likes to coach his teams, you know, it doesn't really leave a lot of... Um, doesn't leave him with a lot of, like... Time to, you know, have these super cool, like, Tom Brady, um, Aaron Rodgers, you know, these big throws that people go crazy for. And the thing is, it's like, it's not like, it's not like Russell didn't have him. Russell Wilson was like the king of, you know, running around the pocket. Does it like he's like meandering throughout the whole place, just trying not to hit it? And then it's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And then you just see Russia just like chuck it, and then it's like, where the fuck is that ball going? And the next thing you know, like fucking Baldwin comes out, or Lockett, or somebody, Luke Wilson, someone just comes out and they just grab the ball. It's like, how in the hell did they make that work? That that I don't know how. But it works. He was just the king of that. He was just king of like getting out of the pocket, you know, find his opportunity, and you know he had great receivers, you know, to help you know to help their quarterback out. So I didn't really get the whole like didn't give Russ a whole lot of opportunities to throw the ball. I mean, he didn't get as much as, like, some of those other teams I mentioned, sure. But it's like, that's just kind of, like, how Pete Carroll likes to coach his teams. He's, like, a real, you know, he's really into the running game. And I'm not going to lie, sometimes that is a little frustrating. It's like, can we please go for a throw? It's like, it's like third down and we got, like, 17 yards to make and then they go for a run. It's like, oh, my God. Okay, fine. Whatever, Pete. I, I trust in you, alright? But, oh my lord. I mean, a running game is great. Like, especially if your running game is working, it's a great way to wear down your de- uh, your opponent's defense. That is a great way to wear them down. So, no disrespect. But Russ, wanting to have more of those big plays... Because, you know, now Russ is, you know, he's saying he wants to be out there with your Aaron Rodgers, your Tom Brady's, your Joe Montana's. You know, he wanted to be up there with, like, on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks. And he just didn't feel like he was, you know, getting that opportunity in Seattle. Again, I don't... I guess... And then that's when you started seeing that, like, him coming out with, like, let Russ cook, let Russ cook. You gotta let Russ cook. And, yeah, as a as a fan, so you kind of could notice that he wasn't as, you know, invested as he was. Not to say he wasn't mostly invested but you can tell that he wasn't as invested as he was before like his heart wasn't into it after a while which i guess after you know you saying i want some more big plays and your coach is like that's cool and all but uh, i like to do things a certain way so i'm just gonna keep we're just gonna keep to this keep to this winning formula okay and like I said, it seemed to work. The, every season with Russell Wilson, we made it to the playoffs, except the last 
season we had with him in 2021. That was the only time in Russell Wilson's, you know, time with us where he did not make it to the playoffs. And speaking of 2021, um, during the preseason, I, well, before before I talk about that game, I would say like a lot of fans, it's like, well, if Russell Wilson wants to leave, then so it's like, it's not going to benefit us to have him on the team if he's not feeling it. He's just going to, you know, kind of cash it in and then, you know. And then that's it. You know, we'll just have like a all right team. But, you know, it could be better. Just let Russ go somewhere else and um, we'll be better off. There was a long rumor about him going to the Bears, which Lord knows. Like, what kind of season would they have had if Russell went to the Bears? I wonder what that turnout would have been. Especially after everything that happened with him going to Denver. Could they have been worse? I don't know. Maybe. But I remember going to the 2021 season. It's like, this is probably going to be Russ's last year. You can already kind of feel it at the beginning of the season. It's like, this is probably the last time having Russ with us. So, let's enjoy it while we can. It's like, what are we going to do as far as quarterbacks go? I believe it was the last preseason game of the season. Of the preseason. And... It was us against the Chargers, which, of course, um, for pre-games or preseason games, they don't use, like, the big stars. They use, like, a bunch of, you know, the bunch of other players that are just on the sidelines in case one of the big stars gets injured. They can just jump on in, backup quarterbacks and all that. So, one of our, our backup quarterback at the time... Uh, With the name of old um, Geno Smith, you know, was starting in this game. And um, I was actually there for this game, this preseason game. And I got to tell you, watching this, you know, being in that crowd, you would not have known that it was a preseason game. You would not have known that. This crowd was just as into this game as any other game throughout the season. It was a really it was a really cool environment to be a part of. But then what ended up happening in our game against the Chargers is that we proceeded to spank the ever living shit out of the Chargers. <clears throat> and a large part of that was due to Geno Smith's playing. It's like something about him in that game, it just clicked. It was awesome to watch. And I think I could speak for my dad as well, who, you know, we went with, we went and then my little brother went too. All of our worries about like, what are we going to do when Russell leaves? What are we going to do when Russell leaves? Oh, Gino's really good. I guess we have our quarterback then. I mean, yeah, he's been playing, you know, second fiddle to all these other teams leading up to this. But, you know, there's a chance. There is a chance. But then something happened in the 2021 season, too, where Russell, at some point, broke his finger. And it looked like he, you know, he wasn't going to be able to play. So, here you go, Gino. Here's your opportunity. Show him how it's done. And for whatever reason, it just 
it just didn't click right. Like, it just wasn't clicking like it was when, when we saw that game. And it was frustrating because it's like, Gino, I've seen you do good. I've seen you do really good, actually. So I don't know what is happening here. Like, it was... It was quite a quite a scene to see, and I was just, like I said, I was just, it, it was just confusing, just really confusing. So, going into 2022, when Russell, you know, did end up leaving, and he ended up going to Denver, not with them. Chicago with the Bears. You know, he went to, you know, go to Denver where their their defense is fucking elite. Their defense is really, really good. And they keep on saying how there's that one little ingredient or that one last ingredient that they need is the quarterback. And when they scored the quarterback... Who son Detroit rejoiced. They were just salivating. And they just, I could not imagine being in Detroit and picking up like a big time quarterback. It's like, oh my God, this is the thing that we've been waiting for. And then you can see Detroit fans like pointing at us like, oh my God, you guys are so stupid. You guys are so stupid. It's like as soon as they scored Russell Wilson, they gave him like this $250 million uh, five-year extension to his contract that he already had. It's like, oh yeah, this guy's going to stay with us. This is also before he played a single play in a single game. So you would have thought that you would... You would have think... That you would just wait mid-season before you blew your fucking wallet load on this dude. You would think. It's just like... You can probably even tell Russell. It's like, listen, we're gonna... We have this idea of, like, we want you to stick around for five more years. But... Just in case it's not gonna work out. And, like, maybe it's not a good, right fit. We'll, 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 we'll do like a, we'll do like a, a performance review mid-season. See how we're doing around that time. And if we're doing great or exceptional, you got a deal. Oh, Denver, Denver, Denver. But like I said, um, people were just like screaming like, oh my God, Denver, they're finally going to get out of this drought that um they are, they have been in ever since Peyton Manning retired after the Super Bowl 50 after they beat the Panthers and then he retired it's like they're finally going to get out of this drought they're going to make the playoffs hell they might even win another Super Bowl which would give Russell Wilson his second Super Bowl ring so ever you know Detroit gets a good team again Russell gets us get another ring again on paper it's like it seems like everyone wins except Seattle and there's a video going around and I'm glad it's going around because a lot of people as loud as they were to scream how great it is for Denver they were just as loud or maybe even louder to scream how stupid Seattle was and Pete Carroll and all of them were giving away their elite quarterback and, you know, making Geno Smith their starting quarterback. Even though one of the parts of the deal that we made with Denver is that we were going to trade over with um, Drew Locke, which was their quarterback for a bit. Which, I like Drew Locke. He's pretty good, but he just... Especially in the pre-seasons, you know, building up to this season. It just, he gave away, he just passed, you know, there's just too many turnovers. So yeah, Geno Smith was, 
you know, for a lot of us, the obvious choice out of the two. But yeah, there's a video going around of a bunch of people saying how, you know, Seattle messed up big time. Oh, they're going to suck this year. Even going as far to say, like, they're going to, Seattle is going to be 0 and 17. 0 and 17. Like, we're, we're not going to win a single game. We're not going to run into one team or at least a couple teams here and there that just aren't doing as great or maybe even worse than us. We can't beat them. We're just the worst fucking team. Oh, boy. Makes that, um... Makes that I told you so. Or I wouldn't even say that I told you so, but, um... Eat your own words pie tastes mm, so good. Tastes so good. Now, I will say as a fan, um, I think I said this earlier, I was not expecting to make it to the playoffs. And even though we're in the playoffs right now, eh, whatever, I'll I'll get to that tomorrow. I didn't think we were going to make it to the playoffs. But Pete Carroll was saying that, you know, I see this being a 10-win, 10-game year for us. Which, so close, Pete. So close. You were just off by one, just one game. You know, there's a couple games that we should have had here and there. And you could have had your 10-game season like you were hoping for. That you're predicting, at least. And while he's predicting, I see us having a 10-game season this year. People laughed at his face. And, oh, my God, this guy's senile. He's crazy. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's an idiot. And as fate would have it, and when I mean fate, I mean the people that literally run the NFL made this game specifically our first game against Detroit. You know, Russell's new team, you know, going against us. In our home, you know, on our home turf, you know, they're probably, most people are probably expecting Detroit to stomp all over us in our own stadium and everything. And then everyone would be all sad and depressed and everything. And, um, first and foremost, um, the first, one of the things I noticed is that when Russell went in, people booed. The ever living shit out of him. Like, I mean, booed him to no end. Which is a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing to think. Because, like I said, we've had others, you know, Seattle stars go to other game, you know, other places. Um, Richard Sherman, you know, when he was with the 49ers, people still were happy to see him when he came around to Seattle. Um, Earl Thomas, when he was with the Ravens, you know, people are still happy to see him. And um, maybe even more so than those guys, every time the Rams, you know, every time we face the Rams and everyone saw Bobby Wagner, they put love on that dude. They, the 12s gave love to fucking Bobby Wagner. And you know what? He gives it back too, which I hope this is true. Because the reason that Bobby Wagner's not with the Seahawks right now is bullshit. But he says after, you know, he has his thing with, um, you know, after his contract is over with the uh, Rams, he said he would be more than happy to finish off his career in Seattle. And you know what? Not only do I see that love... You know, not only do I see him throwing that love toward the 12s, but the 12s are throwing it right back to him. So it's like, it's a neutral, you know, like, Bobby, we miss you. We wish you were still on this team. But, you know, that's all right. And we'll be right here for you whenever that contract of yours ends and you're going to finish off your career as a Seahawk. But I hope when he comes back as a Seahawk, he's not like, 
He's not 45 anymore. He's got to get his 54 number when he comes back. You can't have him come back as the 45. It's like, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. I mean, unless there's like another big star around that time with the same number. But maybe that dude would be willing to, you know, it's like, you know what, Bobby? This is your number. I will take the 45 from you and you can have your 54 back. Maybe. This is all not about nothing. This is just me talking about a bunch of shit. But whatever the case, um, unlike all those guys that I just mentioned, Russell was absolutely booed out of the building. I was amazed, honestly. I didn't think he was going to get booed that bad from, you know, Seattle. That was um that was crazy to witness. That was crazy to witness. And then we proceed to beat Denver not just because we had some magnificent skill especially with defense, especially with defense. Twice, count them, twice Denver was in the red zone like one or two yards, maybe just one yard, from making a touchdown. And two times, not only did they stop Denver, but they got him to fumble the ball twice. Holy shit. Now, while I was predicting that, you know, I think defensively we are going to do really well this season... But this is going to be a rebuild season. This is going to be a rebuild season. You know, our offense isn't going to be terrible. But, you know, there's going to be some time where it's like, this is like a new team going. You got a new quarterback and all that. There's got to be some time for growth. There's got to be some time to figure things out. See how these guys gel. And see, you know, what specifically works for who and blah, 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 blah. So that's a lot of the reason why a lot of us fans were like, "Eh, I don't see them winning this year. Or going to the playoffs this year. But if we do only win one game, at least let it be Denver. Just Just let us win Denver. We can lose the rest of the games. This season, just let us beat Denver. Just let us beat Denver. Please, just let us beat Denver. Because wouldn't that be a kick in the nuts to know that, you know, being at, being Denver, you even if Denver had only got one loss, it's like, wouldn't it be a kick in the nuts to know that the one team that would beat you is the same team that only has one win is against your team? I don't know. That's just a bunch of... Just a bunch of hypotheticals. Because that's not what ended up happening. Not only did we make the playoffs and Denver didn't make the playoffs. Denver was like one of the first few teams... To be eliminated. Like they got eliminated from the playoffs. Early. They got. Like I remember when they said like. Denver is eliminated. It's like oh gee whiz. Gee whiz. Like zoink Scoob. That is quite a. It's quite a. Kind of a different thing y'all got going there. Like. Y'all thinking that you're going to go to um, the playoffs and maybe win a Super Bowl? And what did they get? Four, five wins this season? I don't remember what their scores were. But it wasn't very high. Now, to be fair, Denver did have a lot going against them. You know, they have a lot of players, a lot of key players, you know, out by injury. 
And then um, a lot of it can go to their ex um, head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, who, even in our game against us, made a very questionable. Um, very questionable call for the last play of, you know, of the game. Even though they had, like, an entire minute to go, and they could have put a timeout so they can rethink things, get one more play, get the kicker a little bit closer, that way he has a better chance of making the field goal, they just run down the time to the point where it gets to 20 seconds, which is just, I don't, I don't know what to call that, ballsy, um, ambitious, fucking stupid, I don't know what you call it. It was a call though, it was a call that famously got, um, Peyton Manning, you know, on the show with his brother, just, like, slamming his hands together, like, time out, time out, time out, why are they calling time out? But then they finally call time out after 20 seconds. Oh, no, not after 20 seconds. I mean, after the clock got to 20 seconds. They only had 20 seconds in the game left. Again, call that whatever you may. And despite the fact that their kicker, I think his record was, I forget how far it was, so if my numbers are wrong here, forgive me. But I think the dude's record was like 64 yards. Great Nintendo console, by the way. Yeah, his record was like 64 yards. And then Nathaniel Hackett's idea is like, alright, that's your record, right? Go for 66 yards. Like, we, dude, we had all that time beforehand. We could have just, you know, had Russell, you know, the dude that you're paying $250 million. Like, you figure you, you, you want to use him, you know, to pick up a few extra yards. That way I don't have to try to break my field goal record already. I mean, come on. I mean, fine. Of course he goes for it. And he misses. They lose. So the Denver has been just plagued with injuries, bad calls. Russell just not feeling or looking like his Russell Wilson self. Not until towards the end of this season has he looked or felt like Russell he has not played like himself he has had a really hard time to trying to gel with some of the players a lot of people like to think he's got like these little horse blinders where he's you know he's got like a he has the route in his head he knows he was gonna throw it to but instead of like you know scoping the field you know seeing who else is open just in case that doesn't work out or maybe that guy's just more open than what you originally had planned. Um, yeah, he just had like horse blinders, and you know, it left to a, a many, a many frustrating, you know, incompletes that drove their team crazy. I don't know. I still do want to see Russell do well, though. Like, don't make... Don't think that he's going... Don't... Don't don't make me think... Don't... What am I trying to say? I don't want you to think that I want Russell to not succeed because he's with a different team. Or because he's, um... Super cringy. Super cringy. Like, good lord. I don't know. I don't know who his agent is. But they need to be fired. (laughs) Like, they need to be fired. Because some of the ads they had going up for Russell around this time. It's like, these are the kind of, like, 
these are kind of like the joke, um, like takeouts or the outtakes of like the actual commercial that you come out with. And then you put those out, you know, as like a funny little gag. It's like, oh, here are some original ideas. And then you're just like, what the fuck, Russell? What is wrong with you? <laughs> All right, man. I mean, I guess uh, float your goat, I guess. But, of course, after he started going bad, all of those cringy commercials for, like, Subway, you know, just became something for everyone to attack. Which, apparently, was so severe that Subway had a danger, a dangerous, danger, how do you say the sandwich? A dangerous switch? It was a Russell Wilson sandwich, as apparently was really spicy. Enough for him to, like, have to warn us on how spicy it is. But the backlash and the criticism towards Russell was so strong, they had to discontinue the sandwich. It's like, oh my god. Dude, that was insane. That was insane. Yeah, somebody's like, damn, dude. I don't know what the hell you're doing, but we can't... Whatever luggage you bring in, we can't have it. We already... We're already on very thin ice after, you know, Jared Fogle, all right? So we can't, not to say you're on that level, but we can't have this big mountain of cringe that you are just carrying with you. We need, um, we need to bail on this. Which kind of sucks, too, because I never had a chance to try it out. Like, was it really that spicy? Was that why Russell was always so quiet in those commercials? Because it like burnt his vocal cords? Like, <laughs> Russell, speak up. We can't hear you. Okay, bring, boom, man. Can we, can we bring the mic closer? He's He blew, he burnt out his vocal cords. I just, oh, it's so spicy. It's so spicy. Cut! But yeah, honestly, I, I wish I could have tried it. Probably wasn't even that spicy. A lot of times when people say, it's so spicy, like, oh my gosh. I take a bite, it's like, it's all right, kick. It's not that spicy, though. I don't know what you're talking about. You gotta calm your, you gotta calm down with that shit. Calm you. Maybe you just have a very, very weak tongue palate. Maybe you just can't take spicy stuff. (sighs) But outside of Russell... Got to talk about our team. Got to talk about the Seahawks. Especially Geno Smith. We got to talk about Geno Smith. It has been such a great experience to see him come into his own. Now, obviously, we've had a bit of a rough year. You know, did kind of go through those growing pains that, you know, a lot of us were kind of expecting, you know, trying to figure things out. And, you know, there were some teams that we should have had a win over. Like, we should have had a win over the Panthers and, like, the Raiders. But not only did we, like, lose to them, but... Both of those games is like the Panthers and the Raiders had their best game this whole season against Seattle. It's like, of course they did. Of fucking course they did. Why? That should have been maybe not like a gimme. It could have been a close game, but why did we have to? Who? I mean, we had a really close game with um the Buccaneers, but um, we, yeah, we didn't do great that game either. And then, oh my god, the 49ers. The 40... I'll save that talk for a moment. I'll save the 49ers for a moment. Because I know I'll have to talk about them. Because that's who we have to face off with. So going. But there was a time where, you know, we won our first game. Sure. Then we lost a couple games after that. In fact, here, again, let me pull up their schedule real quick. It's not going to be, just hold on for a second. It will take me real quick. There they are. Uh, do we need to look at preseason? 
Uh, we don't have to, but um, spoiler, we lost all three games. Which isn't terrible. I know they were going through, like, they were especially going through those groin pains. And, like, that was when they were still debating on whether they wanted to, to go with Geno or Tyler, or not Tyler, um, Andrew Locke. But yeah, we won our first game against the Broncos by one. Second game, we lost to the 49ers 27 to 7. Pretty um, significant. We only lost by four against the Falcons 27 to 23. The Lions, like I said, the big scoring game, we won by three points. We lost to the Saints? I don't even remember. Facing the Saints. Where the hell was I? But yeah, we lost to them by five points. Uh, Cardinals, we beat them by ten. Um, Chargers, we beat them pretty well too. 37 to 23. Pretty impressive. The Giants. I remember after we beat the Giants, I was like, dude, we were actually doing pretty good. And we beat them pretty hard as well. Then we beat the Cardinals. That wasn't very surprising. Unfortunately, the Cardinals aren't doing that great this year. Um, they still only beat them by 10, so I guess. We lost to the Buccaneers by 5. Um, Raiders, we only lost to them by 6 points. That was a high-scoring game, too. 40-34? to 34? Jeez. We beat the Rams. Okay, and that has to be close, though. We lost to the Panthers by six again. Like, what the fuck is this six bullshit? What is happening? And then, this last time we faced the 49ers, which kind of gives me a little glimmer of hope just to win a bit. And we lost to them, but I think only by 12 points. I know that doesn't sound great, but it's like... It's better than what we lost to them the first time. Jeez, we lost by 20. At least we lost by, you know. We only lost by two possessions, not three. So, come on. We, we're progressing. We're progressing. Uh, we d- d- we smacked the ass of fucking the Jets. Um, 23-6. to six, Which was nice. And then um, we beat the Rams. Barely in an overtime. That, should, that game never should have gone into overtime. I can't believe Myers missed that kick. But, you know, he did get a chance to redeem himself. So, good for him. Um, one of the big stories that came out of this season, besides us going into the... Going to the playoffs, is that Gina Smith had a... I don't think he ever really said that he was going on this tour or whatever. I think that was just something that the fans kind of noticed and kind of ran with it. Is that Geno Smith, you know, he was not just a second second tier quarterback with us. You know, he had a few other teams before he made it with us. Um, I forget who the third team is. It was either the Lions or the Giants. But one of these teams... I'm kind of leaning towards I'm kind of leaning towards the Lions. Was that the team? I don't fucking remember. But there was that team, there was the Chargers, and then there was the Jets. He was like He was the second quarterback for all those teams and he was on a quote unquote revenge tour. So, even though I had said, like, okay, I don't I don't care if we only win one game as long as that game is against Denver. But then after, we, after he had already won against two of the three um, teams that he won against, it's like, well, I, I mean, it'd be cool. If we made it to the playoffs. But you know. 
if we only won one more game and that game was against the Jets, I uh, I can't say I'd be I can't say I wouldn't be happy for Gino at least <clears throat> on that level. Like I said, I still wanna I still wanna make it to the playoffs, but you know, it's not like I'm gonna lose sleep over it if we don't make it. But yes, I got I think that's why it really helped me get through this season with the Seahawks is that I kind of went in with low expectations. And, you know, the more and more we started doing better and better, it's like I kind of started, as a fan, I kind of was just like, you know, if we just do this, then I guess that would be really cool. I mean, really cool if we beat this team. Okay, it looks like he's beat two of the three teams. Maybe if he beats this third team as well, then we're going to be, I'd be happy, blah, 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 blah. Going into the playoff, you know, the final games this season. It's like, I would, uh, that would be nice if we go to the playoffs. But considering that we have to win against the Rams, which we did. It was a really good game. Really close game. And it's like, I don't know what it is about us going against the Rams or like any of our divisional teams. It's always like, it always has to be close. At least with the Rams, it was always close. It was always a close game with those guys. And a lot of that has to do with Bobby Wagner being over there. Like, keeping us on... Keeping us um, on our toes. Because, yeah, that dude was out for it. He's like, I know that's my former team, and I love those guys. But I'm going to do everything in my power to beat your asses. And, you know, he they got close. They got close both times, but not quite there. And then Lions really did us a favor and beat the Packers, sending Aaron Rodgers to possibly retire. And I don't know what the Packers' future is going to look like. I don't even know if Rodgers is going to retire or just go to a different team. I know there was a rumor for a while that he wanted to, like, he might come to Seattle, which I guess that would have been really cool. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see Geno. You know, as our starting quarterback. And especially having him be successful with us. Which, us going to the playoffs um, now, since Pete Carroll has been our coach, we have still not have, cons- we still have not had consecutive seasons where we didn't make the playoffs. As far as I know, we only... I can't. I think there's only been one season where we didn't make the playoff with them, and that was last season. So that's a really cool accomplishment for Pete. I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon, especially if we keep doing good like this. Our first game. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got a big one. And you kind of knew it was going to come down to this. But it's going to be the Seahawks versus the 49ers in the wild card. Now, if I... Let me go through the rest of this wild card real quick. Because I want to give you some predictions who I think is going to win. We'll start with AFC real quick and then I'll just end it with NFC. Um... First, you know, first we got Dolphins versus the Bills. I think the Bills are going to win. If you ask me, you know, I'm always hoping for my Seahawks, but I I don't want to say it, but I'm still thinking that Bill, this might be the Bills' years to go all the way. If not, uh, maybe the Bengals can, you know, do what they couldn't do last year. They were close. They were close, but couldn't quite get the job done. So maybe this is their year, too. Or even the Chiefs, man. Fuck, dude. The AFC's got just juggernauts of fucking people. But yeah, the Bills, I think, are going to go over the... You know, the Dolphins, I think, pretty easily. I don't think they're going to absolutely slaughter them, but I don't think it's going to be, like, that close. 
I don't know, that's just me. I think the Bengals should have an easy win over the Ravens. Chargers versus um, Jaguars. Um, not only am I rooting for the Jaguars, but I honestly think that the Jaguars are going to come out with this. I am really happy to see how the Jaguars have been doing this season. I have been loving seeing them, how, you know, how their fans have just been just rallying behind them and just the support and love they get. It's just beautiful. It's kind of the same kind of thing I see with like Lions fans where they've been sucking for a bit, but now they're starting to do a little well. And, you know, you feel great for those fans when they start doing well. So I hope like Trevor Lawrence and the rest of that team gets, you know, yeah, I hope they keep going. That would be really cool. I don't, I don't know if they're going to make it past divisional, but it would at least be cool to see them go past the wild card. And I think they will. Because I don't know, the Chargers aren't going into the wild card with a bunch of momentum. Uh, then NFC, we got the Cowboys versus Buccaneers. Uh, I think Buccaneers will most likely have it. I think it's a pretty easy win for them, especially after the Cowboys got their asses whooped by the Commanders. That was a little embarrassing. Vikings versus the Giants. Um... Now, of course, my, you know, you instinctively want to say the Vikings. But I don't know, man. It's hard for me to root for the Vikings or to favor the Vikings at any point. Because I don't know what it is. They are just... They just, for some reason, choke in the playoffs. I mean, it would be a cool season for them. Especially to make it all the way, because this is following them having the biggest comeback in NFL history against um, the Colts, which I'm sure Matt Ryan is happy to have two two huge comebacks going against him. He's in the record book twice for two of the worst reasons. One was at a Super Bowl. Oh my goodness, I wonder which one hurt. I'm sure that Super Bowl hurt more. Even though the Vikings came back for more, I bet that Super Bowl one hurt more. So, I want to say Vikings, but some part of me is also kind of saying that Giants, I don't know, I don't know how great the Giants looked either. I don't even, who the Giants face in their last game? I don't even fucking know. Who did the Giants face? So I don't even know how they look going into this. I just know that the Vikings have a terrible history and making it through the playoffs. But who knows? This could be the year. It's not. It could be, though. But it's not. Okay, now we talk about our game where we go against the 49ers. Now, the 49ers, even though the Eagles are like The NFC champs. Like, they're the big team. I think everyone already knows, like, the actual king of the NFC are the 49ers. These guys are on a different level right now. We have haste the 49ers before. And we've had... The 49ers are probably... Like, our biggest rivalry and one of the most entertaining rivalries of all time. Especially... Especially when Colin Kaepernick was their quarterback and before he started to suck. You know, we had some classic games with him. Especially our NFC Championship with him before we went to destroy the Broncos. It's like we had some great fucking games with him. But they have just kicked our asses this season. Like I said, the second game we lost to them by 20 points. And what was it the last game we lost to them by 12 points or something like that? Two possessions or something? I got to say, um, our defense held up a lot better that second game around 
than I thought they would. Especially after that little... That touchdown that they made at the beginning of the second half. I was like, oh, God. They're just going to run right through us, are they? But no, they didn't. They actually held them. They actually held them down at that point. We didn't beat them. That'd be crazy. But, you know, we did. We did actually hold them off from scoring again. So that would have been cool if we could have got a score, even a field goal or something. You know, just, you know, uh, close the gap a bit, but not quite there. I'm hoping that this huge shift in momentum can push us forward. And you got this new quarterback with the 49ers. And I'm just kind of hoping that, you know, the pressure of being in the playoffs is just going to be too much. Even though I don't know how much pressure that's going to be. Because, like I said, they've been pretty dominant. And I can't remember a team that went from, like, one quarterback where they were rocking it to losing that quarterback to injury, an old Jimmy Garofalo, and then getting this new quarterback, and they just continue to kill it. I don't remember the kid's name that was quarterbacking for the 49ers, but... I guess at this point he is 0-5. So even though the team's not undefeated, he is undefeated. Or the team is undefeated when he's quarterbacking. That would be um That would be a really great accomplishment for us to topple over. Hand this kid his first loss this season in the wild card of the playoffs. Uh, anything could happen. Anything, if anything, or if this season has taught us anything, is that fucking anything can happen. And even though technically the regular season is over, it's still the 2022 season rolling over. So any of these games can go any way. Anybody can win at this point. It could really be anybody. My dream matchup to go to the Super Bowl is, like I said, the Bills versus my Seahawks, which is the only team that I could see the Bills going against where I would actually be going against the Bills because obviously the Seahawks are my team. So it's like, sorry, Bills. Like, just can't have it. And could you imagine that too? Could you imagine, especially after the years that the Bills and the Seahawks have had. You know, Geno Smith having this, like, having this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of always being the secondary quarterback, finally getting to be the starting quarterback and then making it to the Super Bowl, beating all of his teams beforehand. And, you know... Also beating the 49ers, which had just kicked our asses in the season prior. And then just us find a way to power through it and beat them. And then on the other side, you would have the Bills, you know, who had just got through a a very, very terrifying um, incident where one of their players almost fucking died on field. And it was such a traumatic experience that not only did the Bills not want to play, the Bengals didn't want to play either. And even though everyone else was looking forward to the Bengals and the Bills facing off, everyone was just kind of like, after seeing someone almost die on field, everyone was just kind of like, yeah, I think football is done tonight. We It's just no getting that out of your head and there's no way to enjoy this game knowing that some dude's fighting for his life so that was definitely the right call not to do that game and I still do very much believe that bef- 
at least I'm crossing my fingers that the Bengals and the Bills are going to meet up, you know, before one of them goes to the Super Bowl. Like I said, I'm thinking Bills, but I can also see in the Bengals, you know, going to their second straight Super Bowl. It's not out of the question. But then again, also could be the Chiefs. Oh my god, I don't even know. I don't even know, dude. Could be anybody like, oh, this season could be nuts. Or maybe even the Jaguars could find a way to pull a rabbit out of their asses. Oh. Dude, the the AFC is just fucking on a different level right now. And then, yeah, the AFC, or the, no, did I say NFC? I meant the AFC is on a different level right now. And then NFC... Like I said, truly anything can happen. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm just stoked to be in the playoffs. And I was watching a video with Pete Carroll talking to the boys. I'm assuming... I'm assuming after the Lions had won and then they found out they're actually going to the playoffs. Because it sounded like, hey, we're going to the playoffs. It's like, no matter what happens in the playoffs, I am just so proud and happy to see these guys make it to the playoffs. So even if they lose to the 49ers, or hey, maybe they can actually get to the divisional. Or hell, maybe they can actually make it to the NFC Championship. Or, God forbid, they actually make it to the Super Bowl. It will be... Even if we just went lose in the wild card. I am just incredibly happy that we've made it this far. And... Because of Denver and our deal, we have quite a good spot in the draft picks. You know, for whatever, you know, holes we may need to patch up for next year's season. So we can tighten it up in a bit. You know, on the offense or defense, whatever they choose. But oh man. I'm just so proud of the Seahawks right now. I'm so proud of them. I'm also proud of the. I'm also proud of the Mariners. Um, I know they, you know, they got beat pretty bad by the Astros. But you know, it was just. It was amazing to see the Mariners make it to the playoffs since we hadn't been there since. Ichiro's rookie year in 2001. So that was a cool little... It was a cool thing for them to finally break that drought. And... From what I've seen... This is the first time in Seattle history... Where the Seahawks and the Mariners made it to the playoffs. And you know what? Even a team like the um, the Krakens, our hockey team, dude, they're doing f- fucking good. Like, I'm not sure on the standings and all that because I'm not too in tuned on hockey. But I've always been kind of hoping that we would get a hockey team. That way I can start getting into hockey more because I feel like I'd be really into it. But now that we have a hockey team, as though I can follow these guys. And then possibly learn a little bit more, even though I don't know if hockey's really that complicated of a sport. But yeah, it's like I follow those guys on Instagram when I can't be at home and watch their games. And it's like, more often times than not, I'm just seeing like the scores, like, oh, they made this much, they made this much, crack it's win. It's like, Dude, Seattle's just on fire with their teams right now. And then the Sounders are really good. Um, I don't think they did that great this year. But otherwise, they're pretty good. Or they're really good, I should say. And then we got a new football team and the Sea Dragons. 
uh, there used to be the Dragons, but then the XFL like kind of shut down for a bit due to COVID and all that, you know, un- unfortunate timing. But then The Rock bought it, and then he kind of rebooted it, and now things are starting to like click back into place. And then, of course, after you know NFL season ends, then you know we can kind of watch XFL again, see how our team goes, hoping for the best. And yeah, man, I have a lot going through my head. Can you tell I don't I don't talk about sports a lot, and you can kind of get that sense since all this shit just kind of exploding out right now. I'm hoping the next time that I talk about the sports, um, because I'm of course going to be talking about. Maybe I'll just do like a recap of the playoffs, you know, Sunday night or something. I don't think so. But I think that would be cool because um, especially football, you know, I'm pretty good at keeping up on those. I would like to keep up on hockey more and even like baseball. But there's so many sports to try to keep up on and, you know, that's just so time consuming. Like, I wish, I wish we still had this, I wish we still had the Sonics as our, our, um, football, no, I'm, God, I'm mixing, as our basketball team, can't believe we lost them, (gasps) oh, God, I don't know, they keep saying that there's a chance that they can bring them back, but, not before the year of 2024, it's like, if there is a chance, it's not gonna happen any time before that. I don't remember if that's the year, but some year there's like this chance. But that all being said, I'm sorry for dumping all this on you. And I'm not sure if any of that was comprehensible or easy to follow or all that. But please understand, I have had all this pent up throughout the whole season I wish I had recorded this and just done by a week by week by week. That way I wouldn't have to have this whole dumpster load just dropped on you right now. But that's not how it happened. So I kind of had to dump it all on your guys' chest right now. I hope you liked it. (laughs) It's steaming. But whatever the case, um, for all the football fans, um... Who is your team, and did they make it? And if they did, um, which team is it? And uh, what what do you think your team's chances are of actually making it to the Super Bowl? Or even to the next game? Just let me know. And if your team did not make it to the playoffs, who are your predictions? Who are going to win in the AFC and NFC? And who's going to ultimately win the big one at the Super Bowl? And you can also let me know how much of a fuck you don't give about the halftime show. For fuck's sake, I just want to watch the fucking game. Why does it have to be so goddamn long? Whatever you may want. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, put that down in the comments. Um, If you're listening to me on any podcasting um, network like um, Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or iHeartRadio. Um, you can always contact me at, um, under, at JV underscore Novello on Twitter. Ask me or tell me anything that you want. I'm all ears. Other than that, well, that is all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you guys for giving me a listen, a long listen at that. But I appreciate you listening if you listened all the way through. And I hope to see y'all again for the next one. But until then, I hope you guys have a good night. Stay safe. And, of course, join the rant. Have a good night.